In this lesson, we are going to be talking about the square. And a square is just a rhombus that has all of its interior angles as 90 degree angles. So in a square, each of these interior angles are going to be 90 degrees. And then it's going to have all of the properties of the rhombus that we discussed in our last few videos. So all of the properties that we discussed that apply to a rhombus are also going to apply to the square. And the differences are going to be that in a square, these interior angles are 90 degrees. And we know that the rhombus is a parallelogram. So like the rhombus, the square is also a parallelogram. So those properties are also going to apply to the square as well. So let's just take a second to list those properties that we have been discussing in the last few videos. So the first is that our opposite sides are going to be parallel. So we have this side, which will be parallel to this side, and this side, which is going to be parallel to this side. Then we have that opposite sides are going to be equal. And this is what we saw for parallelograms. And what we saw in the rhombus is that all of the sides are actually equal in length. So that is also going to be a property of the square, since a square is just a rhombus with interior angles that are 90 degrees. So our opposite sides are equal in length, yes, but actually all sides are equal in length. So this is what we saw with the rhombus, and this will also hold true for the square. So that means that this side is the same in length as this side, which is the same in length as this side, and this will also be the same. So all four of these sides are of equal length. Then in parallelograms, we saw that opposite angles were equal. And this is also true for the rhombus and the square, except in our square, all of our interior angles are 90 degrees. So in our square, all of our interior angles are right angles. Then we saw that in parallelograms, our diagonals bisect each other. And this is also going to be true for our squares. Our diagonals will bisect each other. Then we saw that in the rhombus, the diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. So this is what we had just proven in our last video. And this is also going to apply to the square. And if you need a proof for that, just refer to our last video where we proved that in a rhombus, diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. And that will also be true for our square. So let's actually just put in these diagonals in our square here. We know that this is a right angle, this is a right angle, this is a right angle, and this is a right angle because we have just proven in our last video that the diagonals of a rhombus bisect at 90 degrees, and we know that that will be true for our square as well. We also proved in our last video that in a rhombus, the diagonals bisect the interior angles. And since a square is just a rhombus with interior angles equaling 90 degrees, that will also apply to the square. So diagonals bisect the interior angles. And again, the proof of this is just going to be in our previous video. And since our square is going to have all of the interior angles at 90 degrees, we know that each of these diagonals is going to turn this 90 degree angle into two 45 degree angles. So when we have our diagonals in, this is going to turn each of these into 45 degrees since it is bisecting a 90 degree angle. Now, another special thing about the square is that our diagonals are congruent. Our diagonals are equal in length. And this is a property that we actually saw in rectangles. We saw that in rectangles, the diagonals were equal in length. So when you think about a square, you can either think of it as a rhombus with its interior angles at 90 degrees, or you could think of it as a rectangle that has all sides of equal length. So I want to take a second and just prove that in a square, your diagonals are going to be congruent. These diagonals are equal in length. So if we just redraw our square over here, we know that all four side lengths are going to be equal. We know that each of these angles are going to be 90 degree angles. We know that our sides are going to be parallel to one another. 
And now we've got our two diagonals in. So what we're going to be proving is that this red diagonal is the same length as the blue diagonal. And that would mean that our diagonals in our square are congruent. So if we actually break up this square into two right angle triangles, let's take this first triangle over here that's made up of this side, this side, and this red diagonal. That is going to make a right angled triangle that looks like this. And we can see that since each of these side lengths are equal, let's give these side lengths a value of A. So this side length has a value of A and this side length has a value of A. And I'll put that onto this big square here as well so we can just see that we're giving each of these side lengths a value of A. So here we have our right angle triangle, which is this part of our square. And it has the hypotenuse as this red diagonal. If we were to calculate what the length of this hypotenuse would be using Pythagoras, what we can do is we can label this red diagonal B. And I'm gonna label that on this large square as well. So our red diagonal is B. And we know that B squared is equal to A squared plus A squared. The hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So B squared is equal to A squared plus A squared. And that means that B is equal to the square root of 2A squared. Now we can do the same thing except this time we're going to make up our triangle with the blue diagonal. We're gonna have our hypotenuse as the blue diagonal and these two sides. So here we have our other triangle with our blue diagonal as the hypotenuse. And I'm going to label the blue diagonal as C. So here we have C and we know that C squared is going to be equal to a squared plus a squared. That's just using Pythagoras. So c is going to be equal to the square root of 2a squared. And we can see that b is equal to the square root of 2a squared, and c is equal to the square root of 2a squared. So b is equal to c. We have just proven that b and c have the same length. So these diagonals are going to have the same length. And we can even prove this without using Pythagoras. If we look at these same two triangles, we can see that we have two side lengths that are equal to A. This is just from our properties of a rhombus and a square that all side lengths are equal. So each of these sides has a value of A. So we can see that in both of these triangles, even without knowing what B and C are, we have two side lengths that are equal to A in each of our two triangles. And in between those two sides, we have a 90 degree angle. And that is going to follow one of our rules of congruency. And that is the side angle side rule, which is when you have two corresponding side lengths and the included angle between them equal among two triangles, the triangles are congruent. So we can see that our two sides are going to form that angle and our two sides are equal between our two triangles and the included angle that is formed by those two sides are equal between our congruent triangles. So these triangles are indeed congruent. And we know that if the triangles are congruent, all of the corresponding sides and all of the corresponding angles will be congruent. And B and C are corresponding sides of our congruent triangles. So B has to be equal to C because of triangle congruency. So we can make a note of that here as well. These triangles are congruent because of the side angle side rule, which means that B is equal to C because they are corresponding sides. So again, we have proven that the diagonals are going to be equal in length. And since the diagonals bisect each other, each of these segments is going to be equal in length. And that is going to summarize everything we need to know about the square.